Hello everyone, this is Nicolas from P2Design and in this part 2 of the campfire tutorial we're going to make the second layer of the campfire effect. In this video we will use Photoshop's tools to make a handmade sprite sheet texture, create interesting transparency shaders and play around different particle systems modules. So let's get started. Let's start by making the two elements required to make the second layer of the campfire VFX, some smokes and some flames. We'll need only one texture and two transparent shaders, an alpha blend one for the smoke and a dissolve one for the flames. Concerning the texture, we will make a sprite sheet containing four different shapes. One out of the four shapes will be applied randomly on each particle emitted by the particle system we will make later on. While making our texture in Photoshop, we'll use a tool that will help us greatly, the Grid tool. It can be activated by going to the View menu, Show and selecting the Grid option. To configure the Grid tool, go to the Edit menu, Preferences and click on the Guides, Grid and Slices option. Here you'll be able to configure and custom the Grid tool. Now that the grid tool is set up, we can draw our flame shapes. Try to make some spiky and round shapes with a round brush, playing around the addition and subtraction of shapes with the brush tool. When you cut the base of your shapes, we'll make them glow. Duplicate your layer, go to the filter menu, blur, and select the Gaussian blur filter. Then, above the layer we just blurred, select the screen blending mode and lower a bit the layer's opacity. To make the texture work with the dissolve shader, we also need to have some darker and lighter value to guide the dissolve effect inside the shapes. For the dissolve effect, we'll make the darker part fade away before the lighter ones. Here, I'm using the smudge tool to simulate the effect you see when you drag a finger through wet paint. It will help accentuate the shape's pointy parts. If you get trouble concerning the values of the texture, don't forget to deactivate the sRGB correction in the texture options. Now that the texture work is done, let's make the alpha blend shader. Right click in the project window, create, shader, universal render pipeline and select unlit shader graph. Don't forget to rename your shader and open it with Shader Graph. We're creating an alpha blend shader with, just like the main fire shader we did previously, a particle color and opacity controller through the vertex color node, an emissive controller, and a depth fade effect. First, let's define the shader transparency mode through the graph inspectors window by selecting transparent in the alpha clip option and keep the blend mode to alpha. Just like the first shader we've made, the checkerboard crown, we are going to create exposed properties in the blackboard that will be accessible on our material. We'll create a texture 2D and two floats, named Bloom and Defade Distance. While the texture 2D property is selected, in the graph inspector, we are going to reference the spreadsheet texture we just made. We'll need a sample texture 2D node and connect its textures input to the texture 2D property we just made and link the RGBA output to a multiply node. We are going to make the color part and just like with the main fire shader, we'll need a vertex color node that will be splitted. Its RGB channels will be combined and connected to the multiply node. We'll then multiply the Bloom's float that will control the emissive intensity of the material. Let's select it and in the graph inspector set its default value to 1 and connect it to the multiply node we just created and connect the final output to the color input of the master node. Now for the opacity part, we'll multiply the vertex color alpha output from the split node to the RGBA output of the texture simpler 2D and multiply the result to a death fade effect. For the death fade effect, we'll need a camera node and multiply its far plane output to a scene depth node. Then, we'll create a screen position node set to row mode, split its channels and subtract its alpha channel to the float death fade distance we made earlier. 
Finally, we'll subtract the camera and scene depth port to the screen position part and saturate it to avoid any opacity artifact. We'll then select the entire node cluster, right click, select group selection and rename the node group to organize our graph. We'll then multiply it to the multiplied vertex colors alpha channel and texture RGBA output and connect the final result to the alpha input of the master node. I'll display the version of the shader here. Now that the shader is done, we'll make it material by right-clicking on the shader, create, and clicking on material to create a material with our shader directly applied to it. After renaming our material, we'll set our dev fade distance property to minus 0.2. Time to create the smoke particle system. Right-click in the hierarchy window, effects, and particle system. In the Random module, we reference the model we just created to see it in action. Then, we'll activate the Texture Sheet Animation module to get only one other shape visually applied on each emitted particles. We will insert the right number of lines and columns of our sprite sheet inside the Tile parameter, set the Frame Over Lifetime parameter mode to random between two constants, and set the value from 0 to 4, so the module will randomly select a shape between the first one and the fourth one. Now, in the global module, we will add a lot of variations in our particles. The lifetime parameter sets the mode to random between two constants, and sets the values from 0 0.7 to 1.1. Then, set the start speed to 0, tick the 3D start size parameter, and set up values from 1.3 to 1.5 to have some non-uniform scaling on our particles. We'll also set a random constant between 0 and 360 in the start rotation parameter and set the gravity modifiers parameter to minus 0.5. This will make our particles rise up over time. In the emission module, we'll add some randomness to the emission rate over time and in the shape module, we'll set up the shape parameter to hemisphere set the radius thickness to 0 and the radius to the minimum value possible. We want our particle to be slower at the end of the lifetime, and we can achieve this by activating the limit velocity over lifetime module. We'll untick the multiply by size and velocity options, set the dampen parameter to 1, set the speed parameter mode to curve and make a S curve going from 50 at the start of the lifetime of the particle to close to 0 at 25% of the particle's lifetime. We'll also activate the rotation of a lifetime module and let the parameter value to 45 to add some subtle movements to the particles. Right after that, we'll add some size variation by activating the size of a lifetime module, setting the size parameter mode to curve and make a S curve going from 0 to 1.5 around 100% of the particle lifetime. Finally, we'll activate the color of a lifetime module. Clicking on the gradient will open a new window where we'll have access to a gradient editor. We'll be able to control the alpha on color of a particle over its lifetime through the vector color node we've implemented earlier in the shader. We want to make our particle fade in and fade out, so we'll add an alpha key by left clicking on top of the gradient and set the two keys as the gradient start and end to zero. We don't want any color change over the lifetime of the particle, so we set the particle's color in the start color parameter in the global module and choose a dark gray. Nice, we have a smoke particle system ready. Half of the second layer is done, and the other half will be faster to make, for we'll be reusing most of the assets we've already made with some adjustments. To make the Little Frames particle system, we'll need a desol shader, and we'll make it by duplicating the alpha blend shader and modify some nodes inside the graph. After opening the duplicated shader, we'll delete this multiply node and replace it by a smooth step node. Controlled by the vertex colors alpha, this node will make a smooth transition from 0 to 1. We'll link the RGBA texture sampler to the output to the in input of the smooth step node, keep the values to 1 at the edge 2 input, add a 1 minus node to invert the vertex colors alpha, and link it to the edge 1 input. After collecting the result to this multiply, we'll multiply the vertex colors alpha to it to make sure that when the alpha is at zero, the particle will have entirely fade out and won't have any visible parts left. 
Just like we did earlier, right click on the shader, create, and select material to make a material with the right shader directly applied to it. We'll also rename it, set the bloom value to 1.5 to boost the emissive part of the material, and set the depth fade distance parameter to minus 0.2. Time to make the particle system. Duplicate the smoke particle system we've already made and apply our newly created material in the render module of the particle system. We'll apply some subtle modifications to our particle system. First, we will deactivate the size of a lifetime module, then go to the global module and change the start color parameter to have a more fitting color for the little flames particles. In the gravity modifier, we'll set the value to minus 0.6. Concerning the 3D start size values, we are setting the range of values from 0.6 to 0.8. We'll also add some start speed, something around 0.5 to 1, and reduce the lifetime between 0.2 to 0.4. We'll change the shape in the shape module for a circle with a 0.2 radius. And that's it, we got our little flames particle system and the entire second layer of the campfire effect. We will group all particle systems we've made by creating an empty object. Select all our particle systems and drag and drop them as childs in the empty object that will serve as a parent. We will set the position coordinates of all particle systems to zero and make some adjustments to their individual position. We will make two last modifications. We want the smoke particle system to be more transparent and behind all other particle systems. To do that, select the smoke particle system and in the random module, set the order in layer parameters value to minus two. And in the global module, in the start color parameter, lower the alpha's value. We got a pretty nice looking fire already. We'll bring some polish to the effect with the addition of the third layer during the next and last part of this free tutorial that is already available at p2design.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.